uh, my first book, I tackled the issue of reparations as a healing, a possible healing, asking people, and, and, and Donna will tell you, from the time I started at the White House, when the race initiative happened with Bill Clinton, oh my God, everybody was saying, that's the girl who's always asking for Mr. President, will you apologize for slavery? And I'm, it, it, but it's, it's real. When he started that race initiative issue, people were thinking about, okay, if you're talking about race and healing, there's this black white dynamic that has to be healed. And also the Native American dynamic that really wasn't on the table like it should have been. But when it came to the black white issue, will there be an apology for slavery? There were some blacks that were for, some blacks that were against it. He was listening to a cross section of black people and he, they never apologized. You know why? And this is the truth. They never got to, it never came to that form of, okay, we're gonna apologize or not. You know, one of the main reasons why, because if you say I'm sorry, then you have to come out with some kind of healing, and that is reparations. How do you determine reparations now in, was it 20, no, it was 1997, 1997, 98. What is it's not 40 acres in a mule, and, and, and 40 acres in a mule now would equate to a house in Potomac and, <laughs> and a Land Rover. So, and, and, and then you get into the question, who actually is black now? And all of that was, yes, I am African-American, period, end of story. And if I do, what is it, 22 and 23 in me, okay, fine, but I'm African-American. So, I mean, I'm five generations removed from the last known slave in my family, sold on the auction block in Fayetteville, North Carolina. His name was Joseph Dollar Brown. So I am black and I am proud of my heritage. And I'm proud of from whence we've come and where we're going. So, with that said, I have asked that question over and over again. George W. Bush said, well, Africans participated, so they didn't deal with it. Yes. President Obama's administration was like, well, why would the black president apologize for slavery? The optics of it did not look right. And you know what the answer is with this president. I'm not even going to ask. I'm not asking anything anymore about are you racist or anything. You just watch and see what it is. You just, if it looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, walks like a duck, it's a duck. But as we, as we begin to commemorate the anniversary or the birthday of Dr. King, let's not forget this is also the 400th uh, year of the first African Americans to arrive on our shores. And so 244 years of slavery. And based on what I've learned from my own family, when slavery was over, when they had no car, they had no, they had no home, they had, no, they had nothing. They started from scratch uh, from 1863 to 1964, getting uh, public accommodations. You had a whole nother struggle with Jim Crow. And then from 1964, 65 forward. We're not that far from where we started and yet we're still having this conversation. I've always believed that we needed something like they had in South Africa where we talk about reconciliation, where we're able to put this stuff on the table. Look, I, I'm, I'm more like James Brown. I don't want nobody to give me nothing, just open the door, I get it myself. <laughs> but I don't want nobody to hold me back. I'm not going That's back, right. I'm not going back. I experienced, I was in the Catholic Church last week, first Sunday, and I almost cried because my church is now asking us to forgive them. When I started in the Catholic Church, I'm from Louisiana, so y'all know the story. When I started in church, I had to sit in the back because I was black. Now I can sit anywhere I want. And this church is now apologizing. So we need, and the church needs some, excuse me, the church needs some reconciliation now. We need it in our country. We don't have it. We can't talk as Americans about our shared experiences. No, we can't. Because we don't have a path, we don't have a, so we have to create those spaces in our community. And that's why uh, I appreciate what Politics and Prose is yes. doing every year. Yes. Because at least we can talk about it here in the District yes. of Columbia. I hope we answer the question you wanna. Uh, really, really briefly, I would suggest reading the book, The Color of Law, that came out a year or two ago by Richard Rothstein, uh, that talks specifically about uh, the way that both the federal government through public housing as well as local city and municipal governments um, system uh, systematically uh, enforced and codified racial segregation um, and that racial residential segregation is upstream uh, to the racial disparities we now see in transportation um, and access right and, and that's and that's where a lot of that is rooted um, I, I do think that 
it would make sense for us to study and explore the ideas around reparations. And too often we have conversations about reparations. We base that conversation in slavery. When you read someone like Coates, he would make the argument and has made the argument that fine, let's have an argue, let's have a discussion of reparations based in redlining. Let's have a conversation um, in terms of housing policy. That in American wealth um, comes from our ability to own homes, and we know uh, why Black Americans have not had the opportunity to own their homes and pass that wealth down, um, while white Americans have, right? And so I think that as we grapple with the reality that we're only about 50 years into full franchisement of African Americans in the United States of America, uh, I think there's a real conversation and debate to be had, even if you were to set slavery aside, what other systematic structural forms of discrimination have lasted into our into our current lifetimes and our current generations that we might explore a way um, to provide reparations for. And so I, I would be complete, I'd be fascinated in a world in which they ever were to bring Conyers' bill up for a vote, um, much less, you know, begin studying it, what they might come up with.